Welcome to the Small Town Podcast. This is Season 2. I'm Monica Lacey, and I'll be your host for some engaging discussions with artists working in contemporary art in Prince Edward Island. Each episode focuses on a different medium, and I bring two artists into conversation around it and their process. This town is small as PEI's only artist-run centre, incorporated in 2010, and we are dedicated to helping foster sustainability for contemporary arts practice in this province. This project is made possible via the support of Innovation PEI through the PEI Culture Action Plan. We recorded these sessions on traditional unceded Mi'kmaq territory. Big thank you to Devin Ross at Thin Slice Media for the sound recording, editing, and music. For more information on each of the artists I speak with, please see the show notes for each episode. For this episode, I speak with two artists working in digital media, specifically photography and digital mixed media. When I spoke with Patricia Bork and Nii Adeogun, there was a great deal of unrest happening in Mi'kma'ki. So in addition to talking about art, inspiration, and hard work, we talk about healing and justice and community on a rainy afternoon. So welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making time for this today. And yeah, we're in the middle of Hurricane Teddy. So there's some intense energies around and yeah, happy to have a moment just to sit in conversation with you both. So uh, to start with, I'll ask you just to introduce yourself and um, if you want to say a little bit about the work that you do, just introduce that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any anything else you want to add um, as an opener for yourself? Awesome. So, can I go first? Is that yeah, fine? Yeah. Yeah. Jump <laughs> in. Sounds good. So, um, my name is Nia Diogun. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a visual artist and a design engineer as well. So, I moved to Canada in 2016 to study design engineering, and um, I graduated in May. So, right now, I'm kind of just like exploring stuff and doing art and um i think i think that's kind of pretty much it i would say okay. <laughs> yeah thank you we'll start there patricia hi my name is patricia i am Mi'kmaq. i'm a photographer from prince edward island or as i like to call it Evagwis. i'm sure i'll say more about myself as we go on <laughs> introducing myself is one of the most challenging things i think for myself so the f- First thing I want to uh, ask you both about, and, the, and this episode is is kind of focused on media art, so people working with, um, I know you're both working with computers a lot of the time. You're having to kind of yeah. edit and process your work through computers. And I wondered if you could uh, speak a bit about the equipment and the materials and, and the gear that you use. And some people I know who work with tech sort of see the gear as a collaborator, yeah. Or, or as an enemy <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. And I just cool. wondered if, if you could speak to what your experience has been um, making your art where you, where you do need those tools and, and what tools you use. Okay, so uh, I actually just recently got like a new laptop. So like I've been using a, an Acer laptop for like the past three years. That's kind of what I started with. But then um, where I started drawing on was in a Samsung Galaxy tablet. So I used that for a while and um, it was a pain cause like it was just very slow at that time. And um, there were several projects that I was working on that uh, I couldn't finish because my laptop was always like packing up and stuff like that. So, and I had to manage that for three years until like this year when I decided to get myself a new laptop, you know, better um, specifications and stuff that would help me design better. So I think that's, that's what I can say on the gear. I think also I'm trying to look into cameras and stuff like that because I'm kind of exploring videography and photography on my side. So I'm kind of using my friend's camera at the moment. So uh, I don't have too much problems with that because I'm still learning it. But yeah, that's about it. So in your new laptop, what, what are you using now? I'm using a MacBook, MacBook okay. Pro. And is it, yeah. has it kind of blown the yeah. process wide <laughs> open and it's so yeah. easy? I know like a friend of mine told me that once you switch to like Apple products, you wouldn't want to go back. And mm-hmm. that's the truth <laughs> because it kind of changes your whole perspective or like your whole uh, like design view, I would say, on how you see 
on how you see stuff on like Windows in general. I think maybe because of the laptop I was using wasn't that good. So the resolution wasn't too like, you know, good. And that had an effect on my designs as well. So I really couldn't see very little mistakes and stuff like that. So, but with the MacBook, it's a more better resolution. So I could actually see like, you know, in details and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm, see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Patricia, what's it like for you with the, what kind of gear are you using and what, what is that like? You know, in the last 10 years, technology, even in my lifetime, but even in the last 10 years, it has grown unbelievable and I can't keep up. So as long as I can remember, it was always used hand-me-down gear and it was always striving for, I need, I need the best. I need a better camera. I need a better lens. I need a better computer to to be better. And so for the last two years, I got access, you know, Film PEI was so supportive to me and I had access to the Mac or the, the iMac. And it changed my life. It, it yeah. was like, wow, I would never have had the resources to get anything like that. And it changed, it, it made me, I think the growth, it's a lot of that learning, um, learning from my mentors. It was learning, having hands on that, wow, I really, it's funny because this year I was able to get myself new gear. I went back to the PC, but I knew what I needed was a better monitor. I needed, I, I understood, I, I didn't go back to the very basics, but it's even the camera gear. I went and bought myself one level up, a new camera body in my Nikon 780. I chose it deliberately. Uh, it could have gotten... I don't know, the D5 or the A10, some crazy, wacky five, six thousand dollar body. But I'm like, you know what? I don't need that. I'm okay with it. It was learning to accept where I was. But in the last two years, I got to learn how to use Photoshop. I never use Photoshop. I never, I still need to learn how to layer. I have not figured out how to layer. Crazy stuff that seems so simple to everybody else, but I'm when you don't have those resources, you're, you're always 10 steps behind. So I'm, I'm very okay with where I'm at. So I have, I keep using my 750 instead of my 780. I'm okay with that now. It's a couple new glasses, mm. uh, new lenses, and I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. I don't, I, I keep putting all the new gear I've been buying this year. It's like, I'm still not using it. I'm okay and comfortable learning as I go, I, it's really hard to put into words, but I'm just being at, more at peace of where I was mm. instead of where I thought I was supposed to be. I'm okay, so I'm taking a few steps back mm. and just chilling. And I, <laughs> I, I mean, I think there is that in in the world of technology because people yeah. are trying to sell you the best, yeah. newest, biggest yeah. gear always. So when you're striving, so there is that pressure. There is yeah. so much pressure, and we put yeah. it. I I had the, the most pressure on myself. It was always on myself. I was competing. I'd go home, I'd go do a concert. I'd go do uh, try to do portraits, and it's like. No, I saw all the mistakes. I wasn't seeing the successes. I wasn't seeing, it wasn't good enough for me. And I'd go home and I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't, I can't. But now I'm like, no, I'm starting to appreciate what I can do. And I like it. I, I, it's learning about just liking and appreciating myself now, liking my work. Especially, I had a cup. I had an aha moment this year, and probably off topic. So there's this photographer that I admire so much, and because of COVID, we kind of just shut down. There's been no events, no work. So he started doing these um, Patreon videos and his tutoring. So for the first time, I got to see his raw files, mm. and I'm like, oh my god. I shoot like that. I shoot, I can shoot just like him. It was like this aha moment that blew me away. I'm like, wait, a, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I'm, I can't call myself a professional yet. And I, and I have a hard time. I can't. It's, it's, it's all about um, confidence level. Mm. But I, I had a big aha moment and I'll take that. It's, it's a battle 
with myself and my internal little demon that just holds me back sometimes. Yeah, I, but, I think that's pretty common for yeah. us artists yeah. that, you know, it's a long time before we feel we're at the level that everyone else sees oh, yeah. us at. Yeah. 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 There was something you said about like uh, about putting pressure on yourself, and I think yeah. like a lot of creatives put pressure on themselves. Like, and you have several people that have ideas that they want to implement, but because they don't have the resources or they think they don't have the resources, they don't actually do it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that one thing I believe is that for whatever it is that you have an idea for or whatever thing you want to do, I feel like you can make good use of like you know resources that you have. You just have to really push yourself and actually, yeah. you know, reach out and see like, okay, maybe you don't even have to own those resources. You could be like, okay, maybe your friend has it and you could just borrow it to use it to create something. Yeah. So like you have a lot of people that delay an idea or a dream because I don't have the resources. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, if you really want to do something, I think you should go the extra mile and actually like push yourself to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's. And in a small place where, where there are places like Film PEI where yeah. you can become a member for forty dollars a year, I think, and yeah. rent their equipment, you know, there are there are places that have the resources even if you don't, yeah. which is I think a lot of artists though, we work alone. We work isolated. Yeah. So we don't it was it was a long time before I started getting out and seeing other people. I'm like, Oh my god, I do that. I'd be like, I'm, I was embarrassed. Like even when Nathan Carter was at, um, I got to go on a couple of um, assignments, a couple of gigs. And I'm like, oh my God, you do that. <laughs> oh, I can do that. <laughs> it was really about seeing other artists yeah. doing what they were doing and confidently. And I'm like, I can do that. I do do that. And it, it's those aha moments. Yeah. And so now getting to be out and just being brave enough to go see other artists and, and just, just talk openly, say, you know what? I do this. Yeah. This is yeah. what I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you both, how, how did you find your way into the work that you're doing? Like, how did it start? How did you, how did you um, start making the art that you're making now? Like what led to that? What was that journey like? Um, I think for me, I know I've mentioned it before, but I like started going into art from like the age of six. So I've always been like a creative, I guess. And um, I had this aunt of mine who was also like a creative back home. But I think um, she she kind of raised me with my mom. So like uh, she was just very creative. She had several ideas. She would try to paint. She would try to just create art and stuff like that. And I would always watch her and I was like, yo, I, like, I really like this. You know, this is something that is, I think I want to do. But I think um, one thing that had an effect on that dream of mine back then was looking at the community of artists in Nigeria. At that time, at that age, I couldn't see like people making enough money off like mm -hmm. art at that yeah. time. So I think I kind of just grew up with the idea that, okay, artists don't make money. I'm just probably going to like find some other job. <laughs> so that kind of like had an effect on the dream. But then moving on to like, let's say grade nine, um, I, had a, I had a competition that I was supposed to enter with my friend in high school. And I think putting my work out there back then was like, a, was an issue for me. But my friend kind of like pushed me. I was like, yo, I think we should enter this competition together. So I was like, okay, cool. If we do it together, I think I would have confidence. So I think they asked us to draw like a flower vase or something like that for the competition. And um, towards the end of the project, he showed me his work and um, it was way better than mine. So I quit. <laughs> I quit. This was like in grade nine. So I was like, you know what? I don't think this art thing is for me. And I had a very messed up mentality at that time because I just felt that like if I couldn't be the best at art in my high school, I wasn't gonna do this, right? So um, after quitting, then up until like grade grade 12, that's when things started changing. So like, um, I, got, I got closer to, to God. I got closer, like I started digging deep into my faith in Jesus. So like that kind of now got me back into art. So I, I think, you know, after spending more time with God, I believe God started revealing stuff about art and how he wants to use me in the art community and stuff like that to reach out to people. So like that 
was or that is why I'm doing art now because I believe that's something that God has given me to do. So yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's it's so obvious and seeing your work and the yeah. effect it has on people, it is yeah. yes, absolutely it's <laughs> what you're here for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for I sharing hope that answers that. your question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank great. you. Wow. I wasn't so fortunate. I mean I always loved art. But even in school, high school, which I'm like, but double your age, <laughs> I, I was trying to survive. I was just trying to get by every day in school. But art um, in photography, I mean, I, it was a hobby. I always liked the camera. But it wasn't until my adult life and I got burnt out office jobs. And that was my healing tool. So between just exploring the land and just that was my it was it was like a spiritual aha as well because i was i only met my Mi'kmaq family maybe 25 27 years ago there was this this whole transformation that was happening within myself um trying to learn who i was and so it was even oh it's really hard to find the words for this because as I'm thinking, I, I have to go back a little further, go back a little further. Mm. But it was, it was a whole life journey. Um, me being on the land is where I heal. That's where I have my, I can think, get clarity, get thoughts. And once I can cleanse all that toxic that I, and pain, that's where I find euphoria. And that's where I would go and I would... You would sit there, and it, very much so, the, the praying, uh, that's where I always felt more connected. So I remember after I left and I it was just burnt out, I just lost my dad, I had lost. My, my daughter was, um, she was still young, I had to be super mom, super daughter, I had to deal with a whole lot of life issues, I burnt out, I had to start from scratch, I was broken. So this hobby turned into my healing. But I remember just feeling this euphoria when I'd be out there and I'd want to capture that moment, that feeling. I want to share that joy with other people. So to me, it was all about that energy. It was that feeling, that love, that happiness. And I started doing that. It was, like I said, it was a hobby. I would come back and I would share it with other people. I discovered Twitter. I discovered social media. And I would start sharing these images and other people started following that I think it was just sharing that joy and I think for the longest time I was wondering what would people get what I was trying to share and it was really just about the joy because I would find that joy wherever I was on the land bring it back but now it's about <clears throat> finding that the beauty and and the love and, and things that maybe people because I remember being in that office and it's, to me, it's hell. <laughs> Desk jobs are, are awful. So to me, I feel really pity for people who have to work in an office and, and can't be out on the land and can't be able to see the beauty walking down the sidewalk, the, the beauty walking down the trails, just going for a car drive. So I try to bring that back and share that with people. And now that I'm kind of moving on to um, more focusing on portraits, because I see beauty in my culture, I see beauty in, in human beings, I can see, I, I still, I capture that moment. I don't like to pose people, but I love to capture that moment and share that. I want people to see, especially the person I photograph, I, I want them to see the beauty that I see when I look at them through my lens or when I see them. It's, it's, I feel like I'm going off on tangents here because it's so different from what you <laughs> yeah. do, but at the same time, it's, um, there's a lot of similarities. But it really is. Uh, once I found that moment of, that's my, my, that's my culture, which is, there's a lot of spirituality to that. Because, I mean, I was raised Catholic, but it, I, I, uh, huh. There's a lot of similarities, but it's still that feeling and that joy and that pure bliss and that euphoria and that connection. And I still think there's 
I try to find that similarities in that and that part of it all because I still believe and I still have faith. Doesn't matter. Hmm. That's that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. That. I'm glad that made sense well, because I'm not to- sure. No, it totally out. made sense. <laughs> well, and I actually want to use it as a as a jumping off point because in both of your practices I really I see a representation of the beauty in your culture and mm-hmm. I wondered if you wanted to speak to um, like what inspires you or, or what you want to what you want people to see about the culture that you come from through your work yeah mm. pride the pride um, education there's sometimes you I'm not I'm not that warrior, I'm not that fighter, but I can, because I was oppressed for so long and not allowed to use my words and not allowed to speak, I wasn't allowed to express myself, I found a new way. I found a new way that can keep me out of trouble. <laughs> I, can, I can express myself through images and that's okay and I can't get my hands slapped for that. <laughs> I, I feel more pride over it. It's. You know, that was one of the biggest things was never being allowed to speak, even when I was a child. It was, you you get oppressed and you're not allowed to express yourself. So I'm still learning how to do that, so to speak. Mm. So I came back from Sonyville, uh, just past Digby, Nova Scotia, where the Mi'kmaq fishermen are being harassed by the settler fishermen. Just wanting to have a, a fishing, a, you know, a, a modest livelihood, uh, our treaty rights go fishing, and they're just getting abused down there. Seeing it firsthand, capturing the moment, I, capturing what was happening. I wasn't out on the water, so I didn't see that violence, but I was, we were um, face-to-face, we lined face-to-face with the settler fishermen, they came and they tried to take over the wharf. I got, I wasn't afraid. I was standing shoulder to shoulder with women with their drums because they, they saw the men were getting so angry. So they started drumming and they knew that that was going to just calm it all down. And the men just backed off and the women faced in the front. And I, I was just in awe to be, their drums and their music or prayers and they stood and they faced them off and it just within minutes they just backed off and they left (laughs) there was no violence at all on the land and it was just the most healing moment Uh, they they started smudging and they sang prayers because that's where our prayers are are in our music and it was just the most amazing experience of my life and I'm so grateful that I got to see that and I was so upset with myself the first little bit because people were it's a long story but um, when the fishermen would leave the little wharf and they would go out they had to face like a hundred commercial huge boats like ten times the size of their own little boats and I couldn't see what was happening so I was getting upset because it was like this huge rock wall and uh, others, the younger ones would climb up and they would watch. And I was like, I wanted to photograph that moment. But I backed down and I just took it all in because there was so much that was happening in that wharf, the people that were there. It was just the most amount of pride I've ever felt. I said, this is what you have is this camera and you have to go capture this history, this history in time, mm. capture the smiles and the bravery that was happening. And that's, that's my tool. That's what I do. So I did that. And I was able to come back and tell the story of what happened over there. And the other people that were there, the other Mi'kmaq people, they were able to see those pictures. And that brings pride to them knowing that we fought shoulder to shoulder for what was right without violence 
but just use our prayers and our music and our, our, our souls and our spirit that were there and our ancestors stood with us and it was the most amazing experience of my life. But that's my gift. That was my gift and I was able to use it and not feel a fear. I was afraid when I left my home, I'm like, this isn't what you do. But when I got there, I just felt completely at peace. And I knew this is what I do. Mm. When it's, it's allowing you to speak so widely and it's so nice. powerfully and thousands of words with every image. And yeah. Yeah. image, that's information. That's, that's power. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. I don't take pictures of lies. I take pictures of truth. So it's nice to be able to have my voice again maybe not in words but with that camera in my hand that's how i do it and we're so glad you do <laughs> <laughs> thank you we're so glad you do Nee, do you want to speak a little bit about about um what you want to show about your culture and the work that you make and the, the beauty that you're you're bringing through I'm still trying to process the question. <laughs> and and you can approach that from any angle. Um, you know, I I see a lot of like the the beauty of of like black culture and the beauty of um, mm -hmm. of like melanated skin. You know, like yeah. you really represent it as as very um, regal and and powerful and steady and mm -hmm. and with so much beauty and and confidence that comes through in the work and um you know i see that when i look at it okay. and I, and i guess i wanted to ask you you know is that are you are you intending that is it just coming through naturally you know are, do you look at your own culture and your community and that's what inspires you yeah you know how how does that come through and what's what's that experience like um i think I think I would say it comes naturally. I know like a lot of people uh, ask me like why, or just say, or notice that I use a lot of um, women in, in, my, in my pictures or in my designs. And I think my reason for that is just to, first of all, I, I want to create a space where um, women and you know, people feel, they feel satisfied with how they look, you know, mm. they, they feel that they are valued and they are worth something, you know, that's, that's the reason why I do that. And I feel like women just based off history, they've not had like an easy way out. Like it's, you know, it's always been been tough for them and i feel like that's something that you know as much as i want to express my my faith in in god and everything but then i also want to express the love i believe that that god has for for women you know and for people you know it doesn't matter the color of your skin doesn't matter the color of your of your skin it doesn't matter your sexuality it doesn't matter like so far you are human you're loved you know and that's that is something that i i strongly want to represent in my in my work and um and yeah i just and i, I did an exhibition last year where one of the arts folks was talking about um satisfaction and that piece was probably i would say like my most favorite piece in the whole collection because I just wanted people to understand that you need to be comfortable in your own skin. You need to be comfortable in your own, you know, in your own skin, basically. And I think that was something that I was able to represent through that design. And um, yeah, I think that's what I would have to say on that question. Mm, that's beautiful. Wow. I hope that makes sense because yeah. I just felt like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are looking at your work like, dream of being in a, in a piece yeah. one day. Yeah. because you do you represent people with this incredible like power and respect and beauty and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
I know a few people have been like, oh, I wonder how you get a photograph of yourself. <laughs> this work. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people ask. Me yeah, for I'm that. sure yeah. you get that question. <laughs> how can I look that good? Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a little bit about the, your creative process. And when you, when you um, create something, is it because you, you go to your studio every day and you're like, I'm going to make something no matter what, no matter how inspired I feel or not inspired, or is it because you get a wave of inspiration um, or you get, you know, um, a deadline yeah. <laughs> or whatever it is. Oh, deadline. So I just wondered what, you, what your process of creating is is actually like and, and, yeah. and is there, you know, are there changes you want to make to it because it's, it's um, you know, working or not working for you? Uh, I think, uh, my my creative process varies. It, it's it's not a fixed thing. Um, there are times that I I wake up and I probably had a dream. Like now, last week, um, oh sorry, this at the beginning of this week actually, I'm working on uh, on the phase two of the Untitled collection that I released, and I was having struggles like figuring out okay how do I go about this? You know how do I come up with the designs and stuff like that. And um, I know that that night it was like 4 a.m. Like I slept really late, so it was like 4 a.m. in the morning. I hadn't slept, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pray to God and ask for direction on this, right? And um, after just sitting on my bed, I didn't get any idea. Like I was just I was frustrated a little bit, and I was just getting exhausted, so I just went back to sleep. And um, going back to sleep, then I wake up at like 9 a.m. And before I wake up an image like flashes in my head <laughs> of like a design that I, I think is really dope. And I wake up, open my notes, I type it, I draw it, then I sleep back. Next, then I wake up next 15 minutes, another image like flashes in my head, right? So I was just waking up in intervals. I did about five times. And um, after like waking up fully, I just looked at my notes. I was like, oh, when did I write this? <laughs> I didn't even like, it didn't even cross my mind that I was writing this like in my sleep low key. So I think, after after that, I was like, okay, God, what am I supposed to do with, do with this? And I was like, oh, yeah, remember when you asked me yesterday night like, or this morning about that? This is the answer to your question. So like that, I get very weird, <laughs> very weird. Uh, or I go through a very weird process to get my ideas. But at times, it comes through like a lot of research too, like just, you know, checking up like other people's work and like, you know, just admiring like several artists. So I do that through like, looking on stock photos pinterest and stuff like that that helps me open my mind to ideas mm -hmm. sometimes i i go for like walks and um, i just kind of go to victoria park like in the morning or something and just like look at the water and sometimes i gain ideas from that so uh of course deadlines too <laughs> from clients <laughs> um you just there's just times where you don't feel like creating but like when you know you have a deadline, you just have to. Like mm. there's no, there's no other option. So like, um, sometimes I just, I just kind of force myself and just sit down. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna create something, even though um, it's not. And most of the time, it's not what, it's not what I had in mind that I end up with at the end of the day. Like it's kind of just wavy. Like it just goes. You know, it's not, it's not a straight line. So you could, you know, you try different things, and that's just it for me. So my creative process is a bit tedious. Like I just try different things and find what works. So yeah. And when you when you sit down to make a piece, do you do it all at once, or does it happen over several days? Or um, sometimes, depends? yes. Now I'm kind of cultivating the the discipline to spread it out. So mm -hmm. if I'm really excited about something, mm -hmm. I would like i wouldn't sleep i would just create the whole thing and i want to see how everything looks at the end of the day like i wouldn't sleep so uh so now i'm trying to cultivate the habit and like actually rest and like you know i think resting too is a huge part of of you know or should be a huge part of your creative process so i think um now i'm kind of just cultivating the habit of you know taking breaks and actually okay i've done this now even though i feel like i should continue i'm just gonna rest and come back and I realized that in that process, I actually do see different perspectives when I come back. Like I see ideas, more ideas, or I see like mistakes that I made on the previous design. So I just, you know, change it and stuff like that. So 
Yeah. So mm, that's, so that's wise. It. <laughs> yeah, anybody who's listening who normally burns themselves out <laughs> trying to finish the thing all at once, yeah, yeah take take heed. <laughs> Patricia, what's your creative process like? Very Come similar. Up. I mean, listening to your story, it's like, ah, oh, oops. Thank goodness um, that I'm not alone because I, I, I always thought I had a weird process, but it's very much, it's very similar. Um, I go on the road trips or I go on, on the land I have to just clear out my head. It's something that will come along, whether it's just visions in my head of how I see it, and then I have to learn how to do it. And that's always been my way because I'm learning as I go because I've always been self-taught. It's trying to figure out how do I get that light the way that is. I see how I want that image or I, you know, that piece, but I don't know how to do it. You learn. How, I just have to figure it out. There was one image I wanted. I could see it in my head. I think it was... I. It came to me in the shower. Uh, it went very quickly, and I had to get out and just go do it. Yeah. I could see how to do it, and I'm like, I wonder if this is going to work. And it was on an old version. I had an old hand-me-down Mac Tower, it was like the old ones. And it was an old version of Photoshop, and I, I could see it in my head. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite visions or images that I was able to create. With the new Photoshop, I was trying to figure out how to do it again and I couldn't figure it out. But it very much is, it's, it's, it's visions that come to me. And I, I, because I'm working with indigenous people who, um, if I want their regalia, if I want to see that, if I want, to me, I was taught that it's, these are sacred items. So I treat that with sacredness. They're, they're, their spirit, their regalia, their themselves. So I have, to, I can't, I can get all the preconceived ideas I want and uh, visions, how I want to create it, but I can't force it. So I usually have to go and, and pray and offer, offer tobacco and just kind of start my ceremony. And it really is kind of turns into a, a full blown ceremony for me because I have to be in a good place. If I am too stressed, if I if I get too frustrated with the process, it's just put the camera down, mm -hmm. yeah. stop, and just okay, creator, <laughs> I need your help. How do I do this? Like, what is it that I'm missing out of all of this? And once you start talking and and praying and just letting it go, and then it just will start. Mm. But you have to be open to that. You have to allow that to flow through and you never know where you're going to end up like even i'm been struggling with the series <laughs> things i mean between covid other projects just things that have been happening i'm so close to being done but it's not exactly how i envisioned it <laughs> and it but i'm so close and what are you working on right now that's <laughs> actually a question i have for you both like what's the what's the project um, right now I've titled it Transformation. It was something that I see, it's, and the more I talk to the, um, I call them my models, but the community members that are modeling for me, when I tell them what it is that I want, I want this before, during, and after. I'm trying to get this, the transformation that happens, I see it, I see it in my lens when they put on that regalia. There's something in their face that happens. I can see it in their body, this pride that takes over. There's this regalness, there's this, the head is up higher. It was, it was interesting because it was at the beginning of 2020 where before when COVID started, people were having a whole lot of fun on social media and different um, challenges. The youngins. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I wanted to take it a little bit further. I wanted to show them, and it, it, it really is. There's this whole. I've had the other shows, the other series where I did um, beyond the regalia. So I wanted to show Mi'kmaq women who we are and tell their stories. Well, this one is now. We're gonna. People need to start connecting the dots. The, I don't know what it is. They see us in regalia. That's the stereotype. That's that's what they expect. But when you see us, maybe in our street clothes or walking down the street, there's all these stereotype labels. It's all negative. So I, it's almost like I need to take them and take them by the hand and show them 
And I just want to show the process that, that we are still the same people. Mm. So why are we getting so labeled over here? You know, mm. I, I just I just want to show and educate and just show the beauty. That we are beautiful in every step. It's, mm -hmm. it's just this is who we are. It's just another form. Yeah. <laughs> That's a powerful project. I'm, I'm really looking uh, I'm forward so to close. seeing it. I saw a little clip from it, yeah. maybe that you posted the other day, but yeah. a little sneak peek. <laughs> yeah. And you, what are you working on right now? Um, I'm working on phase two of Untitled. So, like the exhibition I had two weeks ago, I think. I think it's two weeks ago. So, uh, it was just like a project, a passion project that I that I had. Um, I had the idea like since since february but i decided to to work on it um in august or finish the whole project around like july august and um it's an a and r like a and a r exhibition so that's augmented reality exhibition so uh it was something that i was trying for the first time um i think the whole concept of the of untitled is when creating this collection, I had no like initial concept behind it. So there was no like idea or like concept that I had at first. And I was trying to test my, I don't say I was trying to test my skills. Like I was just like, you know, let me just do this. Let me just see what I can create out of nothing. And um, after creating the whole collection, I was able to, I believe um, God was able to speak to me through those pieces and I was able to like, link everything together so in each like artwork i talk about i talk about um the beginning of time i talk about my concept of um of royalty i talk about like you know wholeness i talk about things that i believe people can relate with so right now i'm kind of working on the on the fashion side of things so because we got sold out on the first phase or first drop so <laughs> so i've tried to create more more pieces for people to have yeah do you want to mention the name of your brand yeah well? it's oh yeah <laughs> i didn't mention it <laughs> my bad so uh, this is under a brand i started in 20 2019 july i think yeah so um it's called zero resistance and i've been working on this for the past one year now and it's been fun to be honest i think i really love it and i'm excited to share my ideas and to express myself through art so yeah yeah and then people can wear it yeah exactly yeah. right yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. been weird because like i see some people wear it on the streets and i'm like okay <laughs> you know it's but it's, it's awesome i'm really yeah. happy to see people supporting so yeah oh that's so awesome how are we doing for um time on we we veered off yeah, a couple of times, yeah, but, times, but um, yeah, okay, cool. So, a few more questions. Um, okay, I have a couple more questions for you guys. Anybody need anything while we're just in a no? Okay. Um, yeah. So, since we've um, we've been talking a little bit about. Uh, like the power of, of prayer, like that's come up a couple of times. Um, if you um, would like to say, like, what is like a dream project that you would do? Like the reach for the stars, like somebody you'd like to photograph or, or a client you'd love to work with. Like what is, let's put it out there right oh. now. Let's call it in. <laughs> 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 if you like, no pressure. But. Yeah, is there is there somewhere that you you want to reach for in the work that you're doing? To be honest, like I think there's just several things that I think I want to do. Like I have a list of projects that I think I want to work on within the next five years. So um, I don't know if I can like pick one thing. I feel like all the projects I want to do are like super big, and I would love to do it. But just in terms of like working with people, I think um, I would want to work with brands like in specific, like I think I would want to work with like brands like Adidas, Nike, and like just, you know, just like create um, campaigns and stuff like that for, 
for the fashion industry and like just just try different things uh yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah that sounds totally doable yeah. let's get it <laughs> <laughs> my pie in the sky dream yeah it is it's been it's kind of growing my ideas it it's it's developing and i think it's doable covid is giving me that time to just I'm taking advantage of that time, but what I would love to see, I want to hit the road. I want to travel Canada. I want to travel to the different territories. I would love to have, at first it was just me photographing, going to different First Nations. But now I want to take it, a mobile gallery exhibit, have a different, like an exhibit that's on the road, take it to the, um, remote indigenous communities and set it up, have it on display. I mean, if they are in, if they don't have opportunities to see art and to experience it, let's bring it to them. Plus then document the whole thing and be able to meet people across Canada. I have met people in the different opportunities. Like when I went to Banff, I was in a, a class I'll call it a class. It's a mold school. A classroom full of indigenous artists from across Canada. In fact, and in the States. So it was... It, it broadened my mind. It, I, thought I got to see. I was like, I'm not restricted to just Ebiguit. I'm not just restricted to mi'kmaq territory. I want to take it across and go explore all the indigenous people in Canada. I would... Across, oh, I should say all the indigenous people across Turtle Island. Mm -hmm. There we go. But I do, I want to bring it out and, and have it on display and bring some kind of a, a mobile exhibit out there. But I also want to be able to capture that, my journey. I just know that there's so much out there that I want to just capture and experience and see. I'm a little late in life starting this, but I want to do it. Oh, there's so much I love that do. idea. Yeah. And that sounds like a slam dunk for a Canada Council grant. Just I think saying. so. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's all up here. <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> the application has been printed off. I'm just playing with... Yeah, at the moment when it's right, it'll just flow out. But I do. Mm -hmm. I, I can see it. I just... The time will come. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking about traveling, I think that's something I would want to do too. Like where I'm able to like go on tours and like actually showcase my work in like several galleries around mm. the world. I think that's a that's a dream of mine for sure. And yes. I think in terms of like the creative brand I started, I want to create a space whereby we have like several, you know, mediums or media whatever where like there's music studios we have like enough space like a whole space where we have music studios we have galleries we have like stores we have you know places where people can paint and like just stuff that um would be would be able to work for people that are creatives and you know that can express themselves through various um the media of art so yeah that's kind of my dream dream yeah. yeah, that sounds good. That yeah. sounds good. I want to I get in on that. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty fun scene. Um, what has your experience been like finding opportunities? Like we're on a we're on a small island here. It's a small um, community, the art community. Ha has it been challenging to find ways to put your work out there, or has has the internet made it really easy? What's your experience been like with that? With actually, um, you know, sharing your, your work or, or getting it sold or noticed yeah. or that kind of thing. Uh, I think for me, it's, it's been, it's been challenging because like, I mean, this is something that I'm doing for, for the first time and, um, it's kind of new to me, but I think so far the community has been very receptive and I think like, um, the internet for sure has definitely made it easier for, for, my, for artist works to be out there. And um, I think in general, PEI has actually provided opportunities for artists to to actually like do projects and, you know, reach their goals. But I think for, for um, international students or people coming from, uh, from other countries, it, it might be a, bit, like, a little bit more challenging than um, artists that are from Canada. But 
so far it's been okay but yeah it has its ups and downs like for sure but it's been good so far yeah well, that's that's good to hear what's it what's it been like for you finding opportunities patricia i've been trying to learn i've been putting myself out there um, whether it was on juries or committees or boards it was about wanting to learn more about the art industry and how to get around in it and learn about what opportunities are out there. So far, opportunity has found me. Like, I don't, and I don't mean that, I hope that doesn't sound too egotistical, but it was because I'm, I'm still learning and, and these, having the shows or having um, maybe stories being put out there. So I had one curator, actually, she messaged me on my, um, my page. So we started communicating. She was really interested in one of the images. And so long story short, there was supposed to be a show this, this last June this year, but COVID changed that. So she was, um, putting a show together and it was called, um, Oh, How did I lose that? I'm sorry, guys. It's my okay. God, my memory. And I, I want to make sure I name the show right. Um, dear Lord. <laughs> These, so I was invited to be one of the artists in a curator show. Uh, these are our monuments. And she's a Mi'kmaq mm -hmm. curator. And it was going to be held in New Brunswick. And um, so we were all working on that towards June, but then COVID changed that. So now we're going to have that series be put out next year instead. So that was something I'm not, that would be my first part um, off island, but I want to do more. I got to go to um, Saskatoon and I can't even pronounce the name of the territory where we were. My apologies, but it wasn't... Um, Territory Six. So we, there was this really amazing gallery. I would love to have an exhibit there, but it was, it's, it's in those travels where I've never been able to travel before that I got to see what's out there. And, um, but I would love to do that. So then I was, <clears throat> I had uh, opportunities like with Canadian Geographic. I had opportunities with um, a couple other different publications. It's all those little things. It's baby steps. It was, I didn't realize it even how far they were going and then how small the world is. Because <laughs> right now I believe anything's possible. But um, so those opportunities just kind of fell <laughs> into my lap and it just felt like the right time. It was always, I look at it as, as a, the gift that came from the heavens that uh, I wanted. So I'm just embracing it. Like even this moment right here with you. <laughs> it's a pretty cool opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just let it go and just see where it goes. <laughs> no, I, I loved getting to hear so much about um, both of your work in this conversation. It's been, been really beautiful and really uh, heartfelt. And I appreciate you being so... Um, so real about your experience mm -hmm. and uh the last question i have for you both is what would you what would you love to say to somebody of any age really who's just starting on this path who's you know feeling ideas come through and wants to make work and doesn't even know where to begin you have any words of wisdom to share or if you like what would you say to yourself at you know mm -hmm. when you quit the the art practice because your friend was better you know what would you say yeah. to your younger self who got discouraged if you could go back and and say hey i would say two things the first thing would be never try to seek the validations of people like that is <laughs> that is one thing that i would tell myself over and over again um i think i've had to learn that hard way because like starting up art like i was always like i didn't even realize it i was always trying to seek for for validation from from just like 
yeah. people around me and just like you know people that don't even know me too like you know when i put my work out there i'm always trying to seek for their likes and their comments and stuff like that and i realized that that was having an effect on my mental health so i had to stop that then after that i then realized that it was even more deep to the fact that i was seeking for validation from people that put like you know on a high pedestal like mm. creatives that um that have gone like farther than i have in this in the creative journey so now i'm learning that i find my validation in god and that's it period like mm -hmm. if god says this is this is good then this is good i don't need anyone to tell me that this is good so that is one thing i would say to my younger self or to someone who's just starting mm -hmm. and the second thing would be consistency like i think that is a major thing that you would need to thrive in the art community you have to be consistent like i think we live in a world where like there's content that's always been put out so you need to be consistent and um i think people shouldn't be afraid of putting out content so yeah yeah that's, what that's say. really good advice <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes, very much so oh mm. my gosh i i how do you top that <laughs> um oh i agree 100 percent. i don't think people realize how many times I basically threw my camera away the day, you know, those times I just following and I'm watching and observing whether it was um, groups or there's always going to be somebody who's going to criticize and they think they're the best at that photography and they're going to criticize and critique it, but they don't know how to critique it in hindsight. It's like, oh, I don't want to be part of this anymore. I, I'm not good enough. And yeah there's so many times i almost i sold cameras off i throw them away i'm like no nah, i'm done creator i'm done i i can't do this anymore i mean i think every every day it's kind of like i'm I'm there already it's like creator you know what if this if this is what if this is the end of the road for that then i'm ready but then something comes along and says no you're not <laughs> done yet but i i agree it's like follow your heart Embrace, find your joy, find your joy and your passions and follow it. Don't listen to the naysayers. My gosh, don't listen to the naysayers and the negativity. <laughs> They're the worst. Oh, just stop and don't listen to them because they will destroy all good in mm -hmm. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it really will affect your mental health. And there's so many times... I've been down into that dark space and then it takes so much harder to get back out. Surround yourself with beautiful light people because that's, it's going to keep you in a positive place and, and surround yourself with that white light because it's, that's the only way. Mm, shine. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you both so much. Thank I really you. Thank you for having me. Your, your appreciate time it. and your energy. And of course, your beautiful artwork. Please never stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening. And thank you for being a part of our community. For more information about This Town is Small and the work that we do, as well as our current programming, please go to our website, thistownissmall.com. Or follow us on social media, on Instagram at This Town is Small PEI, and on Facebook at This Town is Small.